Hi, I'm Matt Sosman, a senior security architect at Microsoft, and I want to show you how to set up a FIDO2 security key so you can sign into not only a Windows 10 workstation, but also applications as well. Let me show you what I'm talking about so we can go full passwordless. Before we go any further, it's important to understand that this feature is in preview. It's in beta. If you want to know more about what preview means, please go to the link here on the screen, but just understand it's still actively being developed. Okay, there are some requirements here before we go further that I would like for you to understand. There's a link here on the screen where you can read more about these, but you have to have Azure multi-factor authentication enabled and ready. Uh, you also have to have combined security information registration turned on, and that's currently in preview, and you can go to that link to learn more. Once you have that turned on, you have to have a compatible FIDO2 security key. Uh, there's many different vendors that this supports. For this demo, I'm gonna be using a YubiKey. And WebAuthn requires Windows 10 version 1809 or higher. And you can find out more what that means at the link below. To use this to sign in to Windows, uh, you have to meet some requirements. And you can see in the matrix there on the screen what's going to be required. Uh, note this works for not only a machine that's Azure Active Directory joined, but also hybrid joined, meaning it's joined to on-premises Active Directory and Azure Active Directory. See the link at the bottom of the slide here for more information on what this means and how to get this set up. What I find really cool about using password lists with a FIDO2 key is that you can also sign in to on-premises resources and it could actually be a single sign-on. So here in the slide you can see some requirements and I do apologize for the font size there, but if you go to the link down at the bottom, this is where you'll learn more about how this works. And I highly recommend reading more about this because at the end of the day, everybody's going to have some sort of a hybrid architecture. And we want to make sure this works for not only your cloud apps, but also your applications that are on-premises. Regarding architecture and data flow, here's straight out of the documentation on docs.microsoft.com covering when you insert the uh, FIDO2 security key, how it actually authenticates you into your Windows machine and into your application. So feel free to pause the video and review this and go out to the documentation to learn more. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into a demo and let's see how to set this up and what it looks like in real life. Okay, here we are inside the Azure Active Directory Administrator Portal. And over on the left side, we're gonna scroll down and click on Security. And then once we do that, over on the left side here, I'm gonna click on authentication methods. And this is where I'm gonna add FIDO2 security key as an authentication method. Now, I've already done this. So there's a couple things we need to do to get this set up. The first thing is when I click on it, I need to go ahead and enable it. And then I can target my users or my groups of users that I wanna have enabled for this. Now, this is my lab, but in production, I probably would do a dynamic security group keying off of some sort of attribute in Active Directory to roll this out. Uh, also, I want to make sure that my users can self-enroll and also enable attestation as well. We'll cover that in another video. And I'm going to turn key restriction policy off. If I were to turn this on, then I would be able to allow and block specific keys, but we're going to leave that alone for now. So I've already added two users, Alex and Megan, and they're enabled. Now, once I'm done here, I'm going to save my changes. Now I'm gonna come up to the top here and click on Enable Users for Combined Security Info Registration Experience. And I'm gonna turn on this preview feature here for users can use the Combined Security Information Registration Experience and make sure that's enabled. Now, once that is enabled, then we're gonna drop over to our other environment where the end user is gonna go through the actual enrollment of their security key. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so to enroll the key, we're going to go to myworkaccount.microsoft.com or myprofile.microsoft.com and click on Security Info. Now, once we're in this screen, we're going to click on Add Method to add a second form of authentication here, and we're going to choose Security Key from the drop-down menu. Then click Add. I'm going to choose USB Device and read the instructions and then click Next. Now, at this point, it's going to redirect me to a new window here. And this is where it's gonna walk me through enrolling of the key. And so I'm gonna go through a wizard here. It says, use your security key to log in. So I'm gonna click continue. At this point, I'm gonna plug in my key and I have to set a pin as per my policy. So I'm gonna set in a pin here and click okay. I then touch the key and then click allow. And at this point, the key is now enrolled. 
So we'll give it a few moments here to process. Now I'm gonna enter a name, so we're just gonna call this Megan's key. Megan is my test user, because she may have multiple keys. And we'll click next, and then we'll finish the process. And just a moment here, it'll show up as another authentication method on the security info screen. Now I love this because it's self-service and the end user can go through and do this themselves. They never have to have IT do it for them, uh, which is great. Okay, and you can easily train somebody on this, create a one sheet of paper, that kind of thing. Now, if we're going to settings on Windows here uh, and we go to accounts and then sign in options, I can actually manage the key myself from here. So if I need to reset this key to factory defaults, I can certainly do that. And here's what that would look like. And so I would basically just touch the key and then uh, I can go through and reset it. So now let's take a look at what this looks like to actually sign into a Windows machine with. On my Windows 10 machine, we're gonna plug in the key and from the lock screen, we're gonna type in the pin that we created earlier. And once I type in the pin, it's gonna prompt me to then touch the key. So there's the prompt. So now if we go down and look at the key, I'm just gonna put my finger on it to touch it. And then in just a few moments, it's going to sign me in. So this can be done from the lock screen or upon initial boot up when you go to log in to the Windows 10 computer. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so now let's see what the behavior looks like when we try to sign into a application like uh, Office 365, for example. So I'm just gonna go to portal.office.com and on my sign in page, I'm gonna click sign in options and then I'm gonna choose sign in with a security key. And then at this point, it's gonna launch my, my window where I type in my pin, my key is already inserted, I'm gonna touch the key and then it size, signs me in. And there's my user identity, Megan. And at this point, we are signed in. Let's take this one step further and let's see what this looks like on another application. So let's open up a new and private window and we're going to mail.google.com and uh, let's try this on G Suite. So I'm going to G Suite. Azure AD is set as my single sign on provider, my identity provider. I'm going to click on sign in options, choose sign in with the key, type in my PIN, hit OK, touch the key. Sure, let's stay signed in. And at this point, it's gonna log me in to G Suite. And here you can see it's starting to uh, get me signed in. Now my lab is pretty crazy. I'm actually proxying this through our CASB, Microsoft Cloud App Security. But here you can see I'm now signed in to G Suite. Pretty cool, huh? I hope you found value in this video. I always enjoy making these. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments in the video or hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm happy to answer those. If you have ideas for additional videos, let me know. I'm happy to make a video just for you. All right, folks, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.